God bless you, uh, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. And suddenly we praise God for another day, another week, that he have blessed us, that he have kept us, that he smiled on us. Just keep being good to us. And suddenly we are indebted to him. Uh, to all of our New Hopians and to all of our family and friends that shares with us uh, each uh, time this week, uh, during this week. Uh, certainly, uh, we praise God for you. I uh, certainly want you to take a moment and just uh, call, uh, text, uh, uh, inbox, uh, uh, family member, or church member, uh, a friend, and let them know that uh, this uh, ministry, weekly ministry here at the New Hope Church uh, will do them good, not only today, but in the days to come. I uh, certainly we pray that you have had a blessed week, uh, blessed uh, Father's Day, and certainly uh, uh, pray that you, uh, those that have a living father, and uh, certainly uh, you shared with them, and certainly uh, those fathers has gone on uh, for to have get that rest, and certainly we uh, know they uh, not not forgotten. God bless you. Let us pray. Guess to God, our Father, we come this day thanking you for this, another opportunity, another privilege uh, to be able to talk to you. And God, as we come now, we come as empty pitchers before a full fountain. Action, and I will look on uh, us again with our pity, our compassion, our mercy. Lord, we pray, and as we yield our will to yours, that you would... Uh, God, remind us of who we are, but above all, whose we are. Thank you, O oh Father, that you saved us right in the nick of time. And God, we pray now that thou would uh, forgive us of all of our trespasses, all of our uh, unrighteousness, all of our false God. Uh, continue to own us as your children. God, we pray for mankind everywhere, uh, those who are going through season of sickness, God, you know who they are. You know them name by name. God, we lift up every uh, member here at our New Hope Church family who are dealing with sickness, oh God, all manners of sickness. And God, we just pray that I would just touch them right now wherever they may be. God, I pray that I would just continue to, to let them know, God, that you is our healer. Lord, I lift up Sister Pearl of Davis and Lift up Brother Sherman, Moses, God, you know, you know, God, how fever their bodies are, sister. I'm praying, God, for our sister Mary Russell, God, strengthen her, Deacon Alfred Marks, and those who are going through sickness, oh God, Stanley Coaston and Gwen Holloway, God, you know how to touch, you know how to strengthen, God, I just pray. That, that you would just uh, calm uh, the bodies, oh God, those who are going through um, all matters of sickness, God. You are able. You can do. Maybe Wilson. Lord, I'm just calling these names because, God, we know that, that, that you can hear our faintest cry. God, I'm praying now. I'm praying for Mother Helen Johnson, oh God. Just touch her. Let her know you didn't bring her this far now to leave her. God, I'm, I'm just lifting up our senior members. God, touch them right now. And then those in our community, God, those who are going through seasons of bereavement, continue to strengthen sister, better Clayton James. And God, look on those who are going through sickness. Strengthen and let them know earth still has no sorrow that you cannot heal. Lord, touch sister Ethel Leslie and others, oh God. Uh, let them know you didn't bring them this far now to leave them. Sister Pauline Thompson continue to strengthen and heal her from the inside out and outside. And God, do it right now. God, you are able. There's no failure in you. Bless us now. You bless our church family as a whole. This is not only New Hope, but every church open in your name. Every preacher, every pastor. God, I'll just lift up the body of Christ now. God, I ask you to come now in the person of the Holy Spirit, touch our spiritual ears that we can hear, our eyes that we can see, our hearts that we can accept what you have to say to us on this day. 
We ask now you that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And all the children of God that loves the Lord said, Amen. All right, let's get ready right into our uh, study on today as uh, we're still dealing with the, the importance of commitment. <clears throat> the importance of commitment. And uh, we, we left with the, um, with the uh, assignment of, um, of uh, looking at what we are committed to. When it comes down to our commitment, we, we must understand uh, the value of our commitment, uh, even when it comes down to uh, our walk with the Lord. And so, so we, 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 if we're going to be committed, is that we must commit ourselves to the Word of God. We must commit ourselves to the word of God and uh, because um, uh, the word of God not only is, is when we study the Bible, when we study the, the Bible, is that it is the infallible uh, words of God. It, it, was, it, was, it was spoken by God, uh, written by different authors, and uh, but we got to know that we only have we have just a, we have not only the spoken word but we have the written word and then we have the living word is that um, uh, uh, and we're going to look at that because I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to St. John chapter number one and, and then we're going to look at how the uh, we're going to look at how that word how the word became uh, flesh and so we got to we got to we got to not only understand, but we must see the value of the word. And, 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 and when we look at the living word, we see how Jesus uh, became flesh, and, and he's the one that taught his disciples, okay? And, and so and when, when we're dealing with the living word is that Jesus, the word, became flesh. And what we have today as far as dealing with the word is that we have the Holy Spirit. And so his word in the Holy Spirit uh, is the same as it was Jesus in the flesh during the, disciples, during the time of the disciples. And so, so, so keep in mind is that God's word does not change. It cannot change. And if the word of God is not true, uh, are you and I are wasting time. And we got to either believe it to be true or false, and so and so uh, so I, I'm I'm driving that uh, uh, that point or making it uh, for us to understand is that we must the most important thing that can happen in our lives as believers and as Christians is to commit ourselves to the Word, uh, 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 not not our own opinion. But we got to uh, take time out, like we said last week, to study, uh, to, to, to read, uh, to remember, to recite the word of God. Uh, 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 not, not, our, not, not our opinion, but we must, uh, we must do that. And, and keep, this, keep, keep, keep that in mind, uh, is that if, 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 if others are going to be saved, if we're going to lead others to Christ, is, is that... Is that um, we got to believe the word. We got to know the word. Amen. We got to know the word. And God let us see that we are not totally committed to the word if we have not taken time out to, to read, to learn, to let the word become a reality in our lives. Okay, so, so let, let, let's, see, let's see what uh, the word, how, how important it is and how this uh, living word is so uh, important. So when you look at John chapter 1, I know you're there. John chapter 1, uh, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the what? Was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, now hear, what we, hear what we have uh, here is that the Word was in the beginning. Uh, 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 Everything when you go to the book of Genesis is a chapter one is that is that we see 
uh, everything that happened that came into existence came into existence because of the fact of uh, the word. Huh? Yeah, the word. The, the word was with God. The word was God. The word was with God. And, and, and the more we love the word, the more we love God. The more we love Jesus Christ. The more we love the Holy Spirit. The more we love the church. The more uh, we understand the word, the more we uh, love the people of God. And above all is that we, we love the work of Jesus Christ. If there is any weakness, not only in our, uh, our, uh, uh, our spiritual lives, but also in the life of the church, is that, is that it falls under the umbrella of that there are those who are skipping the word of God. And as long as we have the Bible, whether it's leather, whether it's electronic, is that as long as we have the word, is that there is no excuse for us not knowing the word. You cannot separate, you cannot separate the word of God from Jesus. Oh, some, some, some say, I got Jesus and, and, and I don't have to read. No, you got to, you got to have both. You got to do both. You cannot know about Jesus if you have not taken time out to study the word. For Jesus, uh, Jesus here is telling us is, is, that, is that the word was, was God. The word was with God. The word has always been with God. Okay? And, and so we got to commit ourselves to the word. Okay? If you skip on down to verse 14 in that uh, first chapter of St. John, listen to what John, uh, 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 the apostle says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In other words, the word was made flesh before the flesh came into existence. Are y'all are y'all listening to me? Is, is that is that is that the word was all the word was made flesh? When you go back to the book of Genesis, you hear him say, "Let us." Before the flesh came into existence, the word already exists. The word had power in the beginning. The word had power then, because listen at when you go to study the book of Genesis chapter 1, is that everything that the Lord spoke, he spoke it into existence. It had power. And I just do believe, my brothers and sisters, that if it had power then, if the word had power then, so does it has power now. And that's a possibility that, that one of the reasons why the church is weak, that there's a possibility uh, from, from, my, from my spiritual perspective that, uh, why there's uh, 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 people not being saved is because of the fact is that, that there's a possibility that those of who claims to be disciples, the claim to be followers of Christ, have not committed themselves to the word of God. So then it leads to the question, said, Pastor, if, that's, if that be the case, how do I become committed to the word? And it goes back to what I said last week, is that we got to fill ourselves with the word. We got to fill ourselves with the word. Just like we commit ourselves to eating, uh, uh, Lisa, uh, three course meals a day, whether, 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 whether we schedule a certain time for breakfast, a certain time for lunch, a certain time for dinner, and in between them, them, them meals is that, is, is that um, you may have some snacks, but the, the, but, but, but the point that I'm, I, I want us to understand is, is that 
is, is, that, is that just like as the importance of us eating uh, physically food, uh, we commit ourselves to eating, we commit ourselves to drinking water, to drinking this, is, is that so it is, we must do it when it comes down to our spiritual life. Is that is that is that we we is that we got to we got to commit ourselves to the word of God. And we have to be careful that we don't uh have more of an appetite of the world than we do of the word of God. Let's go back to Always say is that the more word we get in us, less world. And we have to make sure that when we read the word of God, that we don't just spit it out. We, okay? Because uh, it's so easy to get caught up into the worldly things. We, we can digest so much of the worldly things that uh, when it comes down to the real uh, uh, word of God is that uh, we, have, we, have, we have crowded out uh, Jesus in our lives is that uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have room for him. And so uh, we have to make sure when I'm talking about having room, we have to make sure that when it comes down to our schedules, uh, that we don't have too much of the worldly thing, too much of our personal uh, uh, agenda, that we don't have time for the word. So we got to first commit ourselves to the word of God. And, and, and listen to me, brothers and sisters, that, that, that is the starting point. If you're going, if you're going, if you're going, you just can't eat junk food. And and, and 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 expect to be healthy. You got to have some vegetables. You got you got to have the protein. You got to have the right certain amount of food. You just can't uh, uh, eat junk food. You just can't have a healthy body uh, just eating sweets, huh? And we, and what and what has happened is that we have, so many have have gotten the world e eating the the pleasures of the world is that is that is that they become spiritually malnutritional. So we we got to eat the word, huh? We got to eat the word. We got to be committed to the word. Because the word saved us, okay? Now, uh, go down to verse number 18. It says, no man have seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. No man have seen God at any time. Moses thought he wanted to see God. He thought he, thought, he, thought he could stand to see the glory of God. And God said, okay, I'm going I'm 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 to let you see I'm going to let you see a little bit of me. I'm going to just let you see the, the back side of me. And, 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 and God showed him his, showed, showed Moses a little portion of his glory. And, 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 and the little bit that God allowed Moses to see is, is, that, is that it almost blinded him. Is that when Moses came down off the mountain, is that the, and the children of Israel saw him is that, is that they saw how, uh, how, how radiant and how, and how bright he was. And they, they were scared of, of, of the glow of that Moses uh, 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 had encounter up on the mountain. So, so, so the scripture said, no man has ever seen God and lived to tell it. Moses could not really tell what all he saw. It's because God really could not... Reveal all of his glory to Moses. But when Jesus came in the flesh, is that we is that we can we, we can have somewhat of an idea. Because what we actually seeing, we're seeing a mixture of divine and dust mixed together.
God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. He skipped on down to verse number 26. John answered them saying, I baptize with water, but there are standing one among you who you know not. The one that is coming after me going to baptize you with what fire? Huh? John said, John, 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 John the Baptist said, uh, this, 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 this is something different from me and the one that is coming. I baptize you with water. And so look at what John says in uh, uh, that 29th verse. The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, look, look at what he said. Look here, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What is John talking about? Talking about, look at here, behold, Look at this man coming, the Lamb of God. Goes back to uh, 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 what Jesus said, I came not to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. And so, and so, so when you start studying the word of God, is that, is that in the Old Testament, there were requirements for the forgiveness of sin, is that it had to be a lamb. We studied the book of Exodus. Couldn't be just any kind of lamb for sacrifice when it come down to forgiveness. It had to be a lamb and the lamb. A lamb without spots. A spotless lamb. Lamb with no blemish. So when we become committed to the word of God is that we must believe that Jesus has the power to do what, Pastor? To take away the sins of the world. You and I cannot be effective witnesses if we don't believe that. That Jesus takes away the sins of the world. Get, say that, say that, that Jesus takes away my sins. And, 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 and that, 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 that ought to be a daily exercise that we ought to commit ourselves, just like we eat in breakfast, just like we commit ourselves to dinner, to lunch, to snacks, to whatever we commit ourselves is that is that is that we got to tell us we got to eat that every day make 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 that a practice is that Jesus came to take away my sins and you'll be surprised of the, of the Christians who walks around who are afraid to say that. And there's that, that, you know, ain't nobody here but us. And, 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 and uh, uh, think about that. Is, is that. is that Satan has put this guilt on many uh, believers uh, 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 in their heart, in their mind. Is, is that, is that uh, 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 well, uh, I, I, I told a lie. Oh, I did this and I did that. And, 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 and I, and, 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 and and, and I'm the worst of the sinners. No, no, you, you, can't, you can't let that trick of the devil uh, 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 cause you to, uh, to become effective in your witness, if, uh, become ineffective in your service for Christ. Look at what John said in, in John uh, 1 and 29. 
takes away the sin of the world. Just because I slip, just because I mess up, just because I miss the mark, just because uh, I, I sin, it does not mean that, um, that, that, I, I, that I'm out of reach of the merciful hand of, of Christ Jesus. And when I become committed to the word, when I get the word in me, is that, is that it just simply reminds me that if I do sin, that Jesus will forgive me. When I become committed to the word, is that the word of God reminds me that if I that if I go out and I slip, that if I fall, that if I get entangled in sin, is that I got an advocate. I got somebody that can help me, that I got somebody that can wash away my sin. I want you to think about this. I want, I want you to think about this. I, I'm kind of from the old school when it come down to, um, to bath. I, you know, I, I, I still believe in the tub. I believe in sitting in the water. <laughs> and and uh, I take showers periodically, but, but not like I do uh, when it come down to bath. And, and um, I know they got this, uh, these bottles of, of different uh, containers that... Uh, Come with liquid, but but I I I, I still I still I still believe in a bar of soap. Okay, I, I still believe I may have that uh, that bottle that 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 that, that um, Irish Spring or whatever that uh, I could uh, uh, some. You want to go to the hotel? They don't even have that now. You got this got to squeeze uh, the 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 soap and the the shampoo and the lotion now. But 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 uh, but uh, but I believe I believe in having a bar of soap. The question that I want to ask that if you use that bar of soap, does that bar of soap remain the same size? Think about it before you answer that. That if you use a bar of soap, and you know what a bar of soap is. That if you use that bar of soap, does that bar of soap stay the same size every time you use it? Of course not. What are you saying, Pastor? That if you get dirty today, it does not mean that you did not take a bath on yesterday. <laughs> Oh, that's good teaching right there. <laughs> huh? That if I get dirty on today, that if I mess up, <laughs> it does not mean that I did not take a bath on yesterday or early this morning. And what I'm trying to remind us as Christians is that we all not be afraid that if someone may see our dirtiness, see our dirty sins. So the word of God, when we become committed to the word of God, is that we ought not to be ashamed when we know what the work of Jesus Christ has done for us. So let's not be like that young rich ruler that, that, that bragging on how he'd have kept all the commandments, how, how he'd been good all of his life. Let's not have that attitude. Yes, I'm a sinner, but what 
separate me from other sinners, that I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm too am uh, a candidate for messing up. I, I, I'm too am a candidate for sinning. And that's why it's so important for us to, to, to bathe ourselves in the word of God. When we, get, when we get full of the word, and that's why it's so important for us to understand the work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He don't, he don't, he don't, he don't dwell, yes, in an unclean place, but as long as we got the word in us, the Holy Spirit, along with the Word, washes us. Okay? Holy Spirit brings to our attention our mess up. Uh, uh, that that, 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 that God-given uh, uh, entity that is in us, that nature of God, uh, when God breathed upon his breath in us, he put a part of himself in us called conscious. And that's one of the things that we as believers have not uh, 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 settled in our spirit the word omit. I messed up. I've done wrong. I'm still subject of doing wrong. I'll be tempted at times. And, we, and when we ignore this, is that we are giving in to the tricks of Satan. We, uh, we, we're making room for the enemy, the, the true enemy, who's the devil. We get closer to him and far away from Jesus the Christ. That's good teaching there. So you may want to write this down. Is that the only way you and I can stay close to Jesus Christ is by what, Pastor? Is by reading the word of God. Let me say it again is that the only way that you and I can stay close to Jesus the Christ is by reading the word of God. Satan has no new tricks. And the less word we read, the more we open up the opportunity for Satan to do what he does best. All right. A couple more verses. 37 through 39. In that first chapter of John, it said, And two of the disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said to him, What seek ye? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where the will it thou? And look at verse 39. And he said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and aboard with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Let's stop there. I just want to ask a few questions. When was the last time you spent a day with Jesus? When was the last time you spent at least a day with Jesus? Those of us who's working, <laughs> if we can put eight hours on our job and sometime overtime, and we need to ask ourselves, when was the last time we gave Jesus at least eight hours? We don't want to cheat Jesus out of what is due unto him. 
if we ever committed ourselves to uh, uh, to whatever work, commit ourselves to how many hours? Is that is that is that if these if these disciples that first was introduced to Jesus uh, spent a day with him? What about you and I? And the only time that we can really spend time with Jesus, this goes back to what we said, is through reading the word and prayer. That's only two ways that we can spend time with, uh, with Jesus, with the Lord. The Lord talks to us through his word. We talk to the Lord through prayer. Okay? Get that. He talks to us through his word, and we talk to him through prayer. And you have to be careful with that prayer because you got to make sure it's not a one-way conversation. And many are guilty of a one-way conversation because they don't talk God's language. They don't talk. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't really talk to the Lord when you don't really know the word. You got to make sure that you get enough word in you that when you're talking to the Lord, at least tell the Lord what he said. Okay? If we spend hours talking to our loved ones, to our family and our friends, and leave the Lord out of the equations, is there something that's wrong? Jesus has always been acquisitive. He always had an acquisitive mind, even at a young age of 12 years old, being a Jewish boy. We kind of overlook at what happened when he got left behind by uh, his mother Mary and his father Joseph when they assumed that he was uh, with them. Is that uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, um, it was by law, it was by law that, that a Jewish boy, a Jewish male would, 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 would go to Jerusalem, to the temple at least three times a in a year. But what but the point that I wanna 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 bring to our attention is that is that is that is that is that when Jesus was in the midst of those great theologians, those great Pharisees, those great uh, lawyers, those great teachers, those great strivers who knew the Bible. It wasn't so much as far as him asking them questions, but it was so much what was so astounding about it is how he was answering. What amazed them at a young age, as 12 years old, how much knowledge that he had. When it came down to the scriptures, even though yes, he he may he may have asked them some questions, but he already knew the answer. Yes, Jesus, even though he was not fifty percent God and fifty percent man, I believe he's a hundred percent God, a hundred percent man, all at the same time. But because he was a student, because he studied, because he read the Bible, because because he studied uh, 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 the, the, the the he knew the um, the pinnacles. He knew. He knew the um, uh, uh, the letter of the law. He knew all of that. Because it goes back to what <laughs> he had to grow. He had to grow into wisdom, into knowledge. But the astounding thing, the amazement thing, is the answers.
these disciples, these early disciples, Andrew and them, is that they, was, they, they left uh, John because they was listening to the words of Jesus. They was dumbfounded. And my brothers and sisters, if that word had an impact, if, that, if the word of God has not changed, if it, if it had that much of power back then, I'm certainly sure it would have it today. These disciples got close to Jesus because of the fact of his words. Think about it. The words of Jesus, how he taught. He taught so that uh, 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 the highly educated uh, could understand him. He, 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 he taught so that even babes, I think uh, the great uh, 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 Frank Ray says is that uh, uh, the word of God is so deep that a baby can get in it and, and, and won't even drown in it. <laughs> That's just how deep it is. Okay? So, so if, we, if we want to be effective uh, believers in doing what the Lord have called us to do, is that we got to spend some time with Jesus. And uh, we got to spend some time in his word. And uh, that's how we're going to, um, that's how we're going to be uh, about our father's business. Okay? So, so, so ask yourself, how much time am I spending? I'm spending time with loved ones. I'm spending time with work. I'm spending time with friends. I, I'm spending time, uh, 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 e even when it comes down to church, many say, well, Pastor, I, I, I spent time uh, coming to church. I spent time uh, 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 doing this and that uh, at the church. Do that, do that, do that count. No, that don't count. That don't count. That don't count. Only thing that counts is us getting into the Word. Reading. Studying the Word of God. All of that other stuff we do is just part of the assignment. But, 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 but when we spend time in the Word is that we're spending time with Jesus, okay? So, so make sure that we don't uh, sh uh, shortchange uh, the Lord when it comes down to our commitment. So I want to challenge us. I want to leave us there. Look, look, at, look at your agenda. Look at your itinerary. Look at, look at how you spend uh, 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 your day when it come down to breakfast, when it come down to lunch, when it come down to dinner, when it come down to talking uh, 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 to friends and family, how much that time we spend on Facebook, we spend texting, is that is that where 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 is the Lord at? Where 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 is Jesus at? Where where he's at there in that span of a, a span of a day? Okay. It, if you got you got you got more time with others, if you have not been able to equal it out, is is that you got work to do. Okay, so we cannot become committed uh, to the cause of Christ until we become committed to His Word. Thank you, God bless you. Tune in with us on next week, and I, I promise you it will do you good for the days to come. God, we love you. God, we magnify you. God, we ask that you forgive us of all of our shortcomings. God, continue to give us a heart and give us a thirst for righteousness. Bless us now. Bless each hearer. God, stir up the gifts in us that we not only be hearers only, but be doers of your word. We ask it all in your sweet son Jesus' name. We ask it all. Amen.